Hello again, I am Volante. Now, anybody like me who grew up as gaming itself was growing up will have many fond memories of the golden formative decade that both saved video games as an industry and shaped home gaming culture itself. And this surprisingly elegant looking black and red slab is the Super Retro Trio and it was born to give you one place to play original Nintendo, Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive games. Or if you're from some other places on the planet you may know them as the Famicom, Super Famicom and Sega Genesis. The Super Retro Trio is making its way into the world right now, but it was originally slated for release in December, but Enix, the folks behind it, found a small issue with the controller mapping in a few very early samples, so they delayed the whole production by a few months to make sure that it was as good a product as it possibly could be, and that kind of commitment to high customer satisfaction is very encouraging indeed. And while this type of retro console hardware isn't that rare, it isn't even a new idea that's been around for quite some time now, but this one has several things I really like about it over the rest that came before it. But the first question must be, why buy hardware like this when emulation today is reasonably easy, it can be done on anything from your PC to your phone, even some hacked older consoles can be made to emulate other older older consoles, or even something like the Android based Ouya console, which has a few emulators of its own. Well, there are several really good reasons actually. The first, arguably the most important for the true retro gamer fan, authenticity. This is how these games were meant to be played, on a console, with a proper era-appropriate controller, on a screen across the room, with a soft analog video signal AV output true to the fidelity offered at the time. And that's exactly what's here, proper AV outputs. But if you're after a little extra crispness, there's also an S-video output too. I don't know if I've ever seen that on this type of device before. It's a very nice option to have. The controllers packed in are really quite nice too. You get a pair of them, and as you can see, they're a near-perfect clone of the Super Nintendo pads. And while it's been a while since I've used an authentic Super Nintendo pad, these do seem to feel pretty much identical in use too. The D-pad is responsive and just slightly spongy, which gives it a very comfortable feel. The shoulder buttons actually feel better than I remember the Super Nintendo originals being. These are springy with excellent resistance and positive tactile feedback. The face buttons are a similar story, clicky but quiet. The A and B buttons are gently convex, while the X and Y buttons are slightly concave, making thumb rocker style play work really nicely indeed. The start and select buttons are faithfully Nintendo rubbery also. The connector is an old D9 standard, but the console itself does have ports suitable for both the original Nintendo controller and the original Super Nintendo controller, and you can pop in an original Mega Drive controller into the D9 ports too, of course, if you prefer to use authentic controllers over the ones that come in the box here. But the controllers that come in the box here are both highly usable and will work seamlessly with any of the three system types supported by the Retro Trio. You won't even have to change the ports they're connected to. It just works. The console itself is probably the most elegant and aesthetically pleasing design I've yet seen on this kind of third-party retro console thingy. Because let's face it, a lot of the other ones are truly, honestly, bewilderingly hideous. But here, it's a clean, simple, classy design that nods to the consoles of old, but doesn't look out of place or awkward sitting with the rest of your modern day gear under your TV right now. All three top loading cartridge ports feature spring loaded dust covers to keep crud out of the connectors when it's not in use, and there's a simple three way switch to select which system to power up, each with its own LED light colour. Next to that, a reset button, always handy. On the front is a bunch of stuff, which, once the controllers are unplugged, can be hidden away behind a clean red panel to make things look even tidier when you're not actually playing. But under here you'll find a region switch, so for those games that check these things you can manually set the Retro Trio to report itself as a console native to any region of your choice. I've tested this with Australian games, American games and Japanese games and it's worked flawlessly every single time.
In fact, I have had exactly zero compatibility problems, either with games from all over the world or with games that use special hardware, like Star Fox, for example, with its special Super FX chip built in. I started out saying that there were a few good reasons to go this route instead of the legally grey area of downloading ROMs and using emulators. And aside from getting the most authentic experience this way, well, most authentic next to actually using 30 year old hardware itself, there are other compelling reasons. Now many of my regular viewers will know I do use emulators to get my retro gaming on. I'm not against it by any means, but this way really is a better, more authentic, more honest feeling experience. And using a console like this can even help preserve the original consoles in working order. All electronics will eventually fail, even those without any moving parts at all, most commonly due to thermal stresses on the components caused by it heating up during use. So even if you do own the original hardware, using this instead can save them from all that extra stress so they can continue to stay in working order for decades more. But aside from that, of course, you've also got the convenience factor. The fact that you can effectively have three different active consoles in use at the same time in less space than hooking up all three separately and only using one PowerPoint and one set of controllers trailing their cords across your floor. And you don't even have to use a switcher or keep switching out the AV inputs on your TV. There's also the collector's aspect. It's fun hunting down classic game cartridges. The reward and sense of accomplishment for a victorious hunt is a wonderful thing. It's a thing of pride and simple pleasure to truly own your favorite classic games and be able to play them as they were meant to be played. And in fact, that's where I'll go in the next few videos. I'll be looking at all the classic games I've been using over the past few weeks to properly test this system, many of which I hunted down on my recent trip to Tokyo, a true paradise for retro game enthusiasts by the way, so stay tuned for those, there's some real history in the stack here. Meanwhile, you can snatch up the Super Retro Trio for just under $70, and as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty damn good value. Retrobit have themselves a pretty good name in this whole modern day retro gaming thing, and from my experience here, they've earned it very well indeed. Super glad I gave it a go. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty. And I will catch you next time.